Subglottic stenosis most commonly occurs in patients with either Wegener's granulomatosis, also known as granulomatosis with polyangitis, or else is idiopathic. In other words, we don't know the reason why it occurs in any given patient. The typical location is here, at the level of the cricoid cartilage, but it can extend up towards the vocal cords or down to the level of the trachea. The usual initial treatment includes peering through the mouth and larynx, and endoscopically injecting steroid into the stenosis, and then making small radial incisions and balloon dilating the stenosis so the patient experiences immediate relief in their breathing. Despite intermittent improvement in their airway, some patients' stenosis can recur multiple times, which becomes frustrating to manage over years. For a permanent solution, a cricotracheal resection has historically been performed in which the front half of the cricoid cartilage itself and the upper trachea are removed in an invasive procedure which carries significant risks. The Reacher procedure is an innovative technique to remove just the inner lining of the cricoid and replace it with skin that is thinner and less likely to reach the nose. Reacher stands for Retrograde Endoscopically Assisted Cricoid Hypertrophic Epithelial Resection. The ideal patient has a stenosis which is confined to the area of the cricoid cartilage and does not extend to either the vocal cords or the trachea. Operating with the patient completely asleep and through the neck from below, the hypertrophic scar in the subglottis is approached via the trachea. And with the help of endoscopes, the stenosis is completely resected off the cricoid cartilage. In its place, a skin graft held into position by a small stent, is positioned into the area and secured by a temporary suture. The trachea is then closed permanently and the patient wakes up breathing through their mouth normally. The stent is kept in position for about 14 days postoperatively and then taken out by a short endoscopic removal through the mouth. The idea is that this technique is considerably less invasive than a cricotracheal resection but will still lead to a permanent and long-lasting improvement in the patient's airway.